Hi guys, it is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous, over the top, beautiful winter day here in paradise in the collapse of global industrial civilization outside of Inverness, Florida, here on this lovely Thursday morning, February 27th, 2020. And this is Sam Mitchell, and you have stumbled in probably by mistake, into Collapse Chronicles, where what I do, obviously, is bring you news of the collapse of the planet, and I uh, need to get ready for my interview. This is going to be a, a weird one. I'm getting ready to interview Sarah Bailey. Uh, Sarah, th this is her title, Sarah is the Endangered Species Condom Coordinator for the Center for Biological Diversity. There you go. With a title like that, it's, you know, uh, I've never interviewed a condom coordinator. Uh, so we're going to find out about coordinating condoms. So, uh, what I'm going to do today, I'm going to turn over today's uh, collapse roundup to uh, my lieutenant here in the tribe, Brother Daniel Geary. Daniel has been surfing Google News. You know, I, I uh, search Yahoo News, but the only thing on Yahoo News is the coronavirus. There is no other story on Yahoo News today except the coronavirus. So Daniel went over to Google News and actually found four articles not about the coronavirus. And we're just going to touch on them. The first one coming out here from The Guardian uh, for the people who think that marine sanctuaries are going to uh, save this planet. We're going to go over there to Palau, the Pacific nation of Palau, which I think is getting ready to go underwater. Palau's marine sanctuary backfires, leading to increased consumption of reef fish. Yes, the Pacific nation's protected zone has, in fact, led to commercial tuna fishing vessels leaving the country. Hmm. Palau's much-touted marine sanctuary has backfired, with the fishing ban leading to an increased consumption of the reef fish in the Western Pacific country, such as grouper, snapper, and parrotfish, that the marine sanctuary promised to protect. Palau introduced a new 500,000 square kilometer, otherwise known as a 193,000 square mile marine sanctuary on January 1st to much fanfare. Yes. Uh, so there you go. Uh, since you can no longer eat tuna, just go eat the reef fish. Shops and restaurants in Palau are, are now serving up vulnerable reef fish instead of fish like tuna. This is Yimang Golbu, chief executive of the Palau International Coral Reef Center and administrator of the marine sanctuary. Quote, it will be the opposite of what we wanted. Yes, do you think so? Uh, anyway, and uh, wh what is true for that, you know, these marine sanctuaries, guys, they sound good on paper. They're a joke. This is, uh, and I think, wasn't I reading a similar story out of Manga Bay on one of these things off the coast of sub-Saharan Africa, a very similar story, and obviously, uh... Obviously, marine sanctuaries can do absolutely nothing towards uh, sea level, well, I, I mean, sea temperature rise and ocean acidification. This is one more of these little feel-good 
you know, these little fuzzy feel-good stories. They're a joke. Anyway, uh, we're going to go from Palau to the Arctic. Fast thawing permafrost gouges holes in the Arctic. Yes. Um... Uh, Okay, I uh, I uh, already covered this story. This this is a a uh, quick summation of that article in Wired. Anyway, if you if you missed that video, I'm just going to read the first uh, paragraph because I've already covered this. An article from Wired has an alarming headline that shows the impact of fast-thawing permafrost gouging holes in the Arctic. Usually, these terrains of frozen earth, well, not anymore, fall slowly, usually, but these are unusual times. Landscapes are collapsing in on themselves due to the permafrost thawing faster than ever recorded. Another worry is that when the permafrost thaws, microbes consuming organic matter release CO2 and methane into the atmosphere. This brings about more warming, more thawing, and more carbon. This is a vicious cycle that, once started, as it has started, is feared to wreak havoc on our climate and living conditions on the planet. And uh, then they have, uh, they interview this woman, Mer Merit Turetsky. Uh, Merit, uh, she promised to be interviewed uh, I was going to interview Merritt uh, on the show. Uh, she said, let's do it. And then uh, every time I tried to pin her down, Merritt's kind of slippery. But we're going to try to get Merritt on the show to find out more about this m melting permafrost. And as long as we're up there... Uh, in the northern part of a collapsing planet, Gary is, uh, I mean, Daniel has also sent me this article. Researchers find new reason Arctic is warming so fast. <clears throat> the Arctic has experienced the warming effects of global climate change faster than any other region on the planet. And scientists at the Scripps Institution of Oceanography have developed a new theory aided by computer simulations and observations that help explain why this occurs. Okay, uh, we're just going to read the summation of this. A team led by Scripps researcher Emma Beer observed the changes taking place in the Arctic Ocean which is largely covered by sea ice for most of the year. There, an unusual ex situation now exists where the water is warm at depth and cold near the surface. The deeper waters are fed by the relatively warm Pacific and Atlantic Oceans, whereas the near-surface waters are in contact with sea ice and remain close to the freezing point. Heat flows upward from the warmer water to the colder water. The scientists found that the deeper water is getting still warmer as a result of climate change, but the near surface water below the sea ice remains close to the freezing point. The increasing difference is in temperature leads to a greater upward flow of heat. Uh, the scientists estimate that this phenomenon is now responsible for about 20% of the amplification of global warming that occurs in the Arctic. There you go. The results, this is from the journal Geophysical Research Letters. Another reason that the Arctic is going 
and we're going to go from the Arctic just to the atmosphere from this outfit Eco Watch. I need to. I, I haven't spent enough time over uh, at, at Eco Watch. Uh, this is the one that Daniel highlighted. Carbon dioxide levels in the atmosphere hit the highest level in three million years. According to the most recent National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration report, the last time carbon dioxide levels were this high was three million years ago when the global temperature was two to three degrees Celsius, otherwise known as three and a half to five and a half degrees Fahrenheit, higher than during the pre-industrial area, and sea level was 15 to 25 meters, otherwise known as 50 to 80 feet higher than today. Yes. Uh, where are we? Uh, can someone look up and see where the, uh, I'm out of the Wi-Fi zone. Where is the, where are we today on the register? Earth first passed the 400 million parts, 400 million parts, um, parts per million of CO2 in the atmosphere in 2013. But rather than take it as a dire warning, we have become inured to that level of concentration and have seen it rise in subsequent years. Uh, okay, I think we're somewhere. It would have been real nice. This is just me. If I were the editor of this story, maybe I would put what the most recent one is. Nowhere in this story. Uh, okay, here we go. Finally buried down in the story. In fact, just two weeks ago, on February 10th, uh, NOAA uh, recorded the daily average of CO2 levels as four at 416 parts per million. Yes, yeah, CO2 concentrations are an effective measure of how many fossil fuels we're burning. Yep, yep, yep. And if you uh, enjoyed that story, how about polar bears are increasingly resorting to cannibalism, scientists say. Uh, and... I'm not... I'm not I'm just going down, uh, let's see, well, how about bulldozers to tear through the heart of the Sonoran Desert for Trump's border wall? Exactly, we have the bulldozers revving up in the Sonoran Desert. Anyway, guys, uh, I got to wrap this up because I have a condom coordinator to talk to. Uh, so I need to get on it. Uh, if you enjoyed what uh, Lieutenant Daniel Gary had to share with you today, please spend a few seconds to thumb up this video. If you did not enjoy what uh, Daniel had to share with us, you can thumb it down and please subscribe while you're over here, and most importantly, get out there and enjoy this absolutely beautiful uh, winter day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization while you still can. Bye, guys.